What's going on everybody? It's the granddad of granddad Willie and we are back again with the third end of the year video and it is time for the top fitting honorable mentions of 2018. That's right y'all. This year we had a lot of projects dropping y'all so I had to bump it up to fitting for the honorable mentions and these are albums that just missed my top 15 of the year but still deserve a little bit of shine and praise because they're still dope and they still I mean they still with some quality projects just not quality enough for the top 15. So we're going to do this like all the other videos in order of release date and we're going to hop right into this shit. So the first album on the list goes to Sky Zoo with In Celebration of Us. Sky Zoo is dope as hell. He's been around in the game for a long time in the underground scene. And In Celebration of Us was a phenomenal album. Sky Zoo's got bars. Beats on here are dope. Great features. I love, you know, uh, Baker's Dustin. Made the cake, made the cake, made the cake. Good week. That's just fly. Oh, oh my God. As well as songs like Crown Holder, Stick Up Tape from Menace, and of course the outro track, Honor Amongst These, with an amazing beat and a great story from Sky Zoo, talking about his upbringing and how his interaction with his parents was like. It was a dope-ass way to end the album, and this was a phenomenally put-together album. There has some things here and there that were just like kind of mad on the tracks, but overall, I think that this album was great, and I really enjoyed it, and it was definitely worth an honorable mention because Sky Zoo did his damn thing with this project. So definitely check out In Celebration of Us because it's a celebratory album because it's fucking fire. The next album, y'all, goes to a collaboration joint. It was a lot of collabo albums dropping this year and this is one of the better ones, but it just missed the top 15. And I'm talking about Royce the 5'9 and DJ Premier as Prime with Prime 2. Now, y'all know I love the first Prime album. The first Prime album was so fucking amazing. I love the fact that they sampled Adrian Young's work and the way that Primo flipped that shit was on point. But on this go around, they chose to use Ant-Man Wonder's production or sample from Ant-Man Wonder. And I thought it was cool, but I don't think that the production was better than what they did with Adrian Young's work. But Royce was still killing it on the beats. Primo was still killing it on the cuts. There were a lot of dope joints on here. I love uh, uh, Rocket was joint. I love that joint. I love the way that Primo chopped that up, as well as a whole bunch of other songs. The song with 2 Chains was dope. I think this was a really well put together album. I just don't think it lived up to as good as what the original Prime was, but it was still a solid project. Just, you know, the beats were a little iffy at points here and there, but other than that, still solid, worth the honorable mention. Royce and Primo always work well together. I love when they're doing work together, so I hope that we get a Prime 3 in the future, and I don't know who they're gonna get as far as a producer to sample, but I'm pretty sure whoever it is, hopefully they're dope and they can make some great work out of it, but Prime 2 is definitely worth an honorable mention because it's still a really solid and dope project. Next time on the list, y'all, goes to Kanye West and Kid Cudi as Kid C Ghost with the self-titled album, Kid C Ghost. They really fucking do. But this was a surprisingly good album to me, y'all. I didn't expect much from this album, especially because, you know, I didn't know what Cuddy and Kanye were going to do. But it was actually one of the more refreshing albums out of the seven song albums that Kanye had produced and dropped. The beats on here were amazing. They were a lot better than what was done on Ye. And even some better beats on what the other projects like Daytona and as well as Nasir. And I also think that Kid Cudi did his best work in years on this project. Kanye came with some of his best bars and flows. And I just think that they gelled very well together. Even after all of their falling out and their, you know, differences, they've come together and they made a really dope-ass project. So it's good to see that Kanye and Cudi are working together again and working so well. And I was surprised with how good this project is. It's not perfect, but it's definitely one of the strongest projects out of the whole seven song Kanye fiasco that we got. And I think that it's definitely worth an honorable mention because I really enjoy what Cuddy and Kanye did on here for the most part. The next album on the list, y'all, is an album that I know a million and a half people slept on because this album was super under the radar. I mentioned it in my little uh, let's talk about the shit catch up reviews uh, review thing, but I want to give it another shine and spotlight. And it is Vanderslice with the best album that money can buy. Vanderslice is a dope ass producer. He's been around for a hot minute and he got an amazing feature list on here to come through and put together a really dope ass album that I don't think anybody really, really listened to other than the people who know about Vanderslice. But he had Slug on here, Evidence on here, uh, Freddie Gibbs, Blueprint was on here, Conway was on here, a lot of dope ass MCs on here just killing it. And Vanderslice himself is a dope ass producer with a lot of great beats on here, so I definitely think you should check this out. And you really ain't gotta buy it. I mean, you can stream the shit. It is the best album money could buy, but like you, I mean, I mean, it would be nice if you supported the shit and drop a couple dollars on it, but I mean, you can stream it. I mean, he'll get a couple cents off of it. I mean, it'll add up eventually, I guess. So, I mean, streaming, you don't get shit. But point is this, Vanderslice killed it with this project. It really wasn't an album that, I, when I listened to it, I really enjoyed it because it was an underground boom bap grade A golden age type hip hop album, which I love. But as the year went on, it just kind of fell by the wayside. 
as far as other projects coming through, as far as sticking out, but it is still worth an honorable mention because it's one that I think you should definitely check out if you're into that type of hip hop. Next album on the list, y'all, goes to TDE's own J-Rock with Redemption. Now, I really enjoyed this album, y'all. I think J-Rock came back with a very, very refreshing and dope-ass album. It seems like he's progressed a lot more since 90059. The songs on here are really dope. He had a hit song with Win, as well as some other joints on here that were really dope as fuck. And I just think that J-Rock is finally coming to his own and has really cemented his spot in TDE. For so many years, J-Rock was kind of like that, that odd man out. When Kendrick blew up and then Schoolboy blew up, he was supposed to be that first cat out. And I finally feel now J-Rock is getting his deserved shine and very, very much deserving so because he is really, really dope and this album is phenomenal. I really enjoyed it. There were some cuts on here that I could have deal without, but I do think J-Rock, as far as his discography goes, this is one of his strongest projects, if not his strongest project, and it just shows that he really is here to stay and he has really stepped up to that next level as far as commercial appeal and just popularity. And a lot of people fuck with J-Rock a lot more based off this album. So he did get his form of redemption, y'all. It worked out for the man, and now look at him now. He's a big star. So check out Redemption. Definitely worth the honorable mention. It's on point. Next album on the list, y'all, just made it into this list because I was really just debating should I put it in or not. But you know what? I was like, fuck it. Why not? I'm going to give it to the man. He's a, he's a legend. He's the quote-unquote goat. And he kind of, he cleaned up his mess a little bit. He threw a fit about it, but he cleaned up his mess. I'm talking about Eminem with Kamikaze. Now, we all know about the whole revival disaster. We know about that shit. And M dropped that album. It did not go off well at all. And he was pissed. He was mad. He had a little fit. And eventually, he just said, fuck it, I'm going to fix this myself. And literally, out of nowhere, he drops this album. And on this album, he is rapping his ass off. He ain't playing around. There's no corny, cringy bars. Well, there are some here and there, but it's not as many as it was on Revival. The, the songs on here actually have other rappers on there. It isn't filled with pop singers. He's got Royce and Joyner Lucas on here, but mostly it's M just going in. He's rapping and dissing motherfuckers like he used to. He don't give a fuck. His flows are on point. And except for like the last couple of songs on this album, like the songs like Good Guy and Nice Guy, which are just like, uh, and Venom, even though it, I mean, I said it was in my top five, but it, it, it's still like one of them uh, songs. But overall, I think he did a much improved job from Revival from the rapping standpoint, the songwriting standpoint, the D12 song was dope as fuck as well as some others and I just think that he really did get a fire lit under his ass from all the controversy and backlash he got from Revival and he needs to do that more so hopefully on his next album whenever that's gonna be he keeps that momentum and he listens to us more and just decides to just stick to what he does best and that's rap stop trying to make hits you've done it all you, you, you've done it all and just make some quality music at this point in your career have fun and just do that don't try to worry about chasing hits or whatnot because you're M. People are going to listen to your shit anyway. It doesn't fucking matter. But this album right here is definitely worth an honorable mention. Just made it, though, because there was some other ones bouncing around, but I had to give it to M because he did show some improvement on this project. The next album on the list, y'all, was on this list technically by sort of a, I guess you would have called it a technicality because I would have put it in the top 15, but the thing is, this album didn't even really come out in 2018. This album is actually an old album that just got re-released this year so I couldn't really count it but I did want to at least give it some shine I'm talking about reason with there you have it now this album came out I think 2016 or 7 it came out like a year before or two years before Top Dog decided to like actually repackage it and put it out again but reason is one of my favorite new members of TDE I really was impressed with this project. The fact that he recorded this like uh, years before he signed with TDE and it's so quality from his delivery, his bars, his storytelling, his voice just captures your like ear immediately and he's just able to just say these great lines here and there. He's got bars, witty wordplay like I said, and that fuck that that window pane line that he said, oh, that still gets me, right? That's oh my god, one of the most fire lines I've heard this year. And I just really am looking forward to see what Reason is going to do when he gets that official Top Dog debut with the big production and the big features and just that bigger stage and platform because this album right here is really, really great. I really enjoyed it. It would have been in the top 15 for me, but I just couldn't put it in because it technically was not created and dropped in 2018. But I will say There You Have It is a great album. Definitely check it out. Worth the honorable mention. Next album on the list, y'all, goes to Atmosphere with Me Vita Local. That's right, the homies are on the list. What up, Slug? How you doing, bro? No, so check it out. This album right here is really dope. Like I said, with always, Atmosphere has gotten to this nice little spot where they can pretty much just go on cruise control and continually make quality, well-put-together albums. They're not making classics. They're not making amazing 
mind-blowing albums, but they're keeping that trajectory that just keeps them in that zone where they're making good music that's true to them, and this album is no different. Ant's production on here is really good. As always, with Atmosphere Projects, there are some beats here and there that are okay, but a lot of them are really, really solid, and Slug, of course, is rapping as well as he always is. Great subject matter, personal subject matter. Always, he's talking about getting trimmed with his, with his fat, with his wife and shit. Like, I don't even know all the extra in this slug, but it's all good. As well as just him growing up in, you know, his local land of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and just telling those stories and just, you know, how it's affected him with his family, himself, his friends, all that stuff is just rolled into here. As well as just his outlook on life currently. Virgo is still one of the most beautiful songs I've heard this year. So it's great that this album just carried that momentum from that first single and gave us a solid project. And Atmosphere is doing their thing. Like they're going to continue to keep putting out quality work. I don't see them stopping it anytime soon. So definitely check out Me Vita Local. Dope ass album worth the honorable mention. Next album, y'all, goes to Mr. Drink More Water, Mick Jenkins with Pieces of a Man. Now, I reviewed this album with the homie Luke James, and this was an album that I was really like on the fence about by giving it an approved or a very highly. I gave it an approved, but I will say that I did still enjoy his last album, The Healing Component. A little bit more after I thought about it. This album is still great though. Like Mick Jenkins has came into his own as an artist. He has a great ear for beats, great songwriting ability, great hooks on here. The joint with Ghostface Killer on here, that hook is still in my head. I gotta have it. Please excuse the water bottle habit. That shit is so fucking fire, Mick. But the point is this. This album is amazing. The concept is amazing. Just talking about pieces of the man who is Mick Jenkins and the things that he deals with now being a rapper and quote unquote famous and just the things that he has to deal with in his life because of these things. And it's just a really great, well put together album. It just wasn't one of my favorites of the year because so much else dropped this year that I leaned towards more. But I will say Mick Jenkins did drop another high quality, well put together album and you definitely got to check this shit out. So yeah, Mick Jenkins, drink more water, listen to this album, it's on point. Next album on the list, y'all, goes to Currency, Freddie Gibbs, and The Alchemist with Fetty. Now, this album ended up on this list, y'all, mostly because of Currency. Yeah, blame that nigga, it's his fault. But the, the reason why I say that is because when it comes to these three, Currency was sort of the weakest link on this project for me. He just didn't stand out as much as Freddie and The Alchemist. The beats on here from Alchemist are on point. I mean, come on, every beat on here was fucking fire. Freddie was killing it with the flows and that singing nigga shit he was doing. You know, it's all right, baby. Come on now. I, I need I need a Freddie Gibbs singing album. I do. I, I need it. I really do need that shit because that's just going to be the most hilarious yet dope shit I've ever heard. But Currency on himself, like some of the beats that he was on, just I just didn't feel like he gelled well with them. His flow was just kind of like, man. I mean, some songs on here he did do his thing, but I just felt like I forgot more about what Currency was doing and I leaned more towards of the production from Alchemist and Freddie Gibbs. But most of the album is really, really solid and dope still. It's just that was the sort of drawback for me. So that's why I ended up on the list, y'all. But it's still a really dope album. Beats are hard. Bars are there. And, like, just, just for the fact that, you know, you know, you know, when you're fucking with the blow, whoa, whoa. Come on, Freddie, do it. Just do it. Like, give us Pinata and then give us a singing nigga album and I'll be done. I mean, that's all you need to do. You can retire to the sunset with all the money you need, nigga. But this shit was dope. Check it out. Next album on the list, y'all, goes to Vince Staples with FM. Now, this album snuck up on me real quick because I didn't expect it to be as dope as it was, especially after Big Fish Theory, which he tried a whole bunch of different EDM-type shit, which when I listened to the album, I really didn't care for. But I did like it a little bit more when he performed that shit live. I, it, it clicked with me a lot more, but it still was just a mad album. But this one right here feels like Vince Staples back in his natural form. The beats on here are banging. It's got that West Coast flair. He's rapping his ass off while still sneaking in some very smart, witty wordplay and bars. And I just feel like the theme of it, where it's like an episode of Big Boy's Neighborhood, it just really ties it all together real well. And maybe because I was in L.A. at the time when I was first listening to this album, driving through L.A., the shit just seemed like more authentic and real. So it just made me like it even more. Maybe that's what it is. But this is still a dope-ass album. It's not like the best album like of the year or anything like that to me personally. And I think it's just because it's, it's very short. We get the Earl Sweat shirt little cameo and as well as the Tiger cameo, which is cool. But I just feel like this was a fun little listen to listen to, but it wasn't like a full-fledged meal from Vince Staples, and I feel like we could have got more from him. So hopefully we get a full album in 2019 that's still the same vibe because this one right here was really dope. So check out FM, cut off the radio, and throw this shit on because it's a lot better. And shout out to Big Boy and the whole neighborhood. Next album on the list, y'all, goes to Styles P with Dimebag. Now, like I said in the previous video, y'all, Styles P has had a hell of a year. He's been dropping quality work, and this is one of my favorite albums from him. This is probably, I don't know if I, 
Do I like this or G-Host better? I don't know. I think I like Dimebag a little bit better, y'all. This shit's fucking fire. The beats on here are dope. He just really encompasses the whole SP, the ghost feel that you love to get from him, as well as the concept. It's 10 songs. It's a Dimebag. Dime is 10. He gets, I get the concept of the shit. And it's just a dope, hard-hitting Styles P album that you just, you know, if you fuck with Styles P, you're going to love this project. And it just shows that Styles P, after all these years, is still putting out quality, high-level, consistent work. This motherfucker's got so many goddamn albums and projects and EPs out, and he just seems to just keep that momentum and to keep that consistency. And that's a lot to say for somebody who's been in the game for this long, especially because Jada Kiss and Sheik Luch from The Locks don't put out nearly as much work as Styles P, but like Styles P just continues to keep churning out projects. So I can't wait to see what he does in 2019. He's gonna be selling them health juices and selling them bars on the side, or the bars first and then the health juices on the side. I'm gonna try some of your juice if I go to New York one day, Styles. Hopefully, hopefully it's good. If it's nasty, I ain't gonna tell you because I don't want, I don't want to be disrespectful. I'll just go outside and I'll spit it out real quick. But it's all good. Your albums are fire, and this one right here is dope as hell. The next album on the list goes to J.I.D. Jid with DiCaprio 2. Now, this one right here, y'all, was it was a dope album. It had a lot of good moments, but like I said in my review, I just feel like Jid could have gave us more. I feel like he has a lot more potential in him than what he gave us. Like, he has the rapping ability of, like, a god like his flow is impeccable the way he can switch it and stop and start at the drop of a dime is literally amazing but when it comes to his content and his subject matter he's not really giving us really much to really just sink our teeth into i mean yeah you're gonna get some bars talking about you know his status how he's famous his, his position in the game now him being on dreamville as well as just some some personal stuff here and there but he really doesn't touch too much on it but i do like the fact that the beats on here overall are really solid some were just man forgettable and kind of blended in but some really did stick out as well as the fact that he has dj drama on here kind of making it like a makeshift gangster grills mixtape which i think was a low-key gangster grills mixtape so i think that was cool as well but the album in the end just didn't stick out to me as much as other projects but it still was very dope and i really do want to see what jid's gonna do on his next project or next couple of projects after he gets a little bit more mature a little bit more seasoned and he can really just drop in a phenomenal album with a great concept because i know it's in him we just gotta wait to see but the caprio 2 still a very solid album and definitely worth the honorable mention so check that shit out if you have not next Next time on the list, y'all, I was fighting with, with the same motherfucker. Like, he had dropped two of these, and I was like, which one's going to get on the list? And which one's going to be on the honorable mention? And I had to just think about, like, how it made me feel, how much I played it, how much I listened to it. And I think it was kind of cheating because I had more time with the prior one than this one. But it's just going to be here. Black Thought and Salam Remy Streams of Thought Volume 2. So it was either between this one or volume one, and I had to give it to volume two, but it was a very close call, y'all, because both EPs are amazing. Black Thought is killing it on the rapping side. His bars are literally unmatched. This motherfucker's like a super Jedi level rhymer, and like, he's scary as fuck the way he can just do this shit, and he's been doing it so long. Salam Remy with the beats on here are very dope. It really went back to that root sound with that live band jazzy feel. Salam Remy did a great job on the production and it fit Black Thought well. And I just love how this project came out. But I feel like Volume 1 with the Ninth Wonder production, maybe it's because I love me some Ninth Wonder production. There was rappers on there and it just was a bar fest. Like, I felt like that one to me personally was a little bit better. Like, I talk, if this is Volume 2 and this is Volume 1, Volume 1 was like right there. It was that fucking close for me, y'all. And I had to really sit and think about it. But that's what it is. So I guess I just gave you a spoiler for one of the fucking albums tomorrow. Who gives a fuck? Now you know. That's one, but still. But this one right here, definitely worth an honorable mention. It almost made it in the top fitting, but it just, it got edged out by its own fucking self. So guess how good Black Thought is. He can like outdo his own self, but still be close enough. That's how fucking genius this motherfucker is. But definitely check out Volume 2, Streams of Thought. It's on point. And the last album on the list, y'all, goes to none other than Earl Sweatshirt with some rap songs. Now this one right here, y'all, I had to think a lot about because when I first listened to some rap songs, I did not like it. I was like, ugh, this fucking album sounds terrible on the mixing. The beats on here are kind of off kilter. I'm not sure what I'm listening to, but after listening to it a few more times, I got the idea. I know it's Earl's depressed, so he's really giving off that vibe and that mood of being depressed and anxious and sad and, and just like conflicted and him being fucked up from being on so many drugs and he's just putting all that into his music and his sound which I get and I understand it more I still was a little 
not a fan of the mixing thing. I know it's intentional, but I just like my ears just could not get with it a hundred percent. But after listening to the album a few more times, it did resonate with me a lot better. I did appreciate what Earl was doing and saying. The lyricism here on here is still on point. I love some of the beats that he produced on here, like Shattered Dreams and December 24th and The Bends. He really like tapped into his inner Mad Lib knowledge, you know, a little bit of MF Doom in there as well. And I just really love what he's done as a producer and he still holds his own as an MC. But I just feel like this album right here, it grabbed me later on, but still not as much as somebody who probably is actually going through these things if you're really depressed or have anxiety or anxious you can resonate with this project a lot more but from a musical standpoint it's still a solid project just wish the mixing was done a little bit better you can hear Earl a little bit better on some songs I wish that was the case but it's still very solid and I do understand the concept and I will give my nod to Earl for that because it is very difficult to kind of craft that sound based off of that emotion and I feel like he did it the best out of anybody else who's ever attempted it. So good job Earl. Can't wait to see what you do on your next project. Hopefully it doesn't take too damn long and hopefully you can get better and you can get some form of recovery somehow some way so we get you in a better mood or a better like state of mind on your next project and you're not getting even more and more depressed or more and more sad because that shit's hard to get out of but hopefully you find the help you need and you can get better because you are way too talented for you to let that take you down and there it is y'all that's my top 15 honorable mentions of the year so let me know what you think of the list if you agree if you disagree what's your top 15 honorable mentions that just did not make your real list but you think should get some shine and we're gonna talk about the shit you know what it is but now, y'all, we got one more, one fucking more left after this, and this the top fitting albums of 2016, which you will, of course, get my album of the year that's going to drop tomorrow, so make sure you stay tuned for that shit. But this one is in the book, y'all, so give it a thumbs up, drop a comment. Like I said, tell me what you think of the list. Give me your list. Let's talk about the shit some more, and that's what it is, y'all. So until next time, I'll take my leave. Granddaughter, top Fifteen honorable mentions to 2018. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let's talk about it. I got time. I ain't got shit else to do. God damn it. But yo, this has been a good year for hip hop, y'all. So now let's see who got the top 15 spots of the year from your boy. It's up next. I'm out of here.